Okay, good afternoon, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we have today a session of uh, two seminars, uh, taking advantage that we have a meeting here of uh, course action of physics of cooperation and conflicts. The, the coordinator of the action with Richmond is, uh, is with us. Uh, the uh, two speakers today are two people that have already given seminars here, so I will not spend much time uh, introducing them. Uh, Renaud Lambiot, uh, well, in his, for, his previous visit he was in London at that time, I guess. Yes, I was. And now he's in the University of Namur in Belgium, a center for complex systems of our normal And uh, he's going to talk on random walks and networks, dynamics and teleportation. And after the, uh, the uh, his seminar, we'll have a coffee break and a second uh, seminar by Yaris Armani. Okay, that's all for the introduction. So, so hi everyone. Uh, so what I'd like to emphasize here is that so what, what I'm going to present today is extremely recent research, which means that uh, it's not complete yet. So it's more like some, some work which, uh, which is under development. But I think I was a bit bored of always giving the same talks that I've been giving for the last two years. And I already gave a, a talk here last year, so I could not replicate what I, what I talked about last time. It, it couldn't be very fair to you. So, so what, what I'm going to talk about today is really about two recent works. So the first one is with uh, Till Hoffman and Nathan Porter from Oxford University. And it's about so, random walks on networks that evolve in time. And the second part of the talk is on a collaboration with uh, Martin Roosevelt from UMIA University in Sweden, which is also about random walks, but on, on, a, on, yeah, on a certain trick that people use when doing random walks on network, which is about teleportation. So these two talks are about random walks and complex networks in a broad sense. The focus on different subtopics, but uh, I think yeah, I think that you might find it interesting. And anyway, for me it's interesting because I might have some feedback on, on this research, which is always positive. So so maybe I just did one slide on networks, just in case because I don't know exactly what type of research all of you are doing. I know some of you personally, but not all of you. So, so I'm interested in networks, and many people are interested in networks. And one of the reasons for that is that networks give us some universe, a universal language to describe systems that are quite different from each other. So you might think of the internet, uh, the web, metabolic networks, social networks, the brain. All of these things are quite different from each other, but all of them are made of nodes, elements that are interacting with each other. So you have nodes and links. And all of these extremely different systems can be described by the same format by using network theory. So now, as a, I used to be, I'm still a physicist, I suppose I'm, I'm in the math department, but as a physicist, of course, you're interested in universality, or at least trying to find some common features in different systems. So I guess that one of the reasons why networks have been so popular with physicists is that they gave us tools to compare very different systems and, and to look for universal mechanisms, universal properties. <coughs> so now, so when you look into, into to the research that people do in, in networks, I think that there are three types of questions that people are, are, are interested in. The first one is about, describe, about describing the way systems are organized. And so what pe people have come up is a set of uh, statistics, of metrics, to describe the way systems are organized. So you can think of degree distribution, modularity, clustering, all sorts of metrics that help us to describe in a mathematical way uh, to summarize the organization of large, uh, large networks. So there's another type of question that people are interested in. It's, is it possible to, to propose mathematical models that produce these observations that we make in, real, in, in the real world? And so there are hundreds of models for the way networks evolve or, or, or could have evolved to, to reach the organization that you observe. So the most simple, one of the most popular ones is the one that is the preferential attachment that many of you know, which is just a model of the way networks are growing in time. But there are really hundreds of models that people have been studying and proposing over the years. And then there is a third type of question, which is what I'm going to be interested in today. It's what is the effect of topology on dynamical processes? So what is the effect that this the topological organization of the network has on the way a certain dynamical process evolves on the network. And you might think of different types of, of, of processes. So, so for these types of questions, first of all, you need to have a model for the dynamical process. And there are, again, many types of 
dynamical processes you might be interested in. So there are models for open information, like Max has been doing quite a bit in, 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 this, in this type of research. There are people interested in random walks. Random walks is a very standard way to, to, to model dynamics diffusion on a, on a certain medium. People are interested in the disease spreading of, of, of synchronization. And all of these different types of processes, well, when you think about them, they all look like some kind of diffusion because, well, Opinion formation is it's the way a certain opinion diffuses in a certain in a certain society. Random walks, it's the way random walkers are moving around. This is pure diffusion. Uh, disease spreading is also the way some some yeah, some some, bacteria, some, yeah, some some disease is going around in the network and diffusion in the broad sense. But uh, without going to the details, even if all of these models look alike, they are described by different mathematical properties. The evolution is driven by different matrices, and their properties can be quite different even on the same network. This is just just a side note. So once such a model has been defined, what one of the questions that people are interested in is: Is it possible to identify what are the properties of the graph that accelerates or hinder the propagation of of the process? So, given, for instance, what random walks, what are the important topological properties that will affect the way the random walk is explored in the graph. So what are the important properties to accelerate or, or hinder or decelerate the propagation of either disease spreading or random walk or whatever? <coughs> and now, of course, one of the reasons why people are so interested in understanding the effect of topology and dynamical processes is because it, it might help us to understand how diffusion takes place in empirical systems. So for instance, for disease spreading, it has direct application to understand how human mobility, for instance, and the way we meet each other might affect and accelerate or decelerate the, the way a certain disease, whichever this disease is, will spread in the system. So this is a first, uh, this is not a question that people are interested in when looking at how topology affects dynamical processes. But there is also something else that people are interested in, is the fact that, mm, which is related to this first point, point I was mentioning, which is the fact that Many metrics, many of those metrics that are here, are based on a certain dynamical process. It means that many of those metrics here are, have been made, have been uh, set up by using a certain dynamical process here. Uh, and, and here in the following, I, I will read two first on run and move based metrics. So this means that metrics here that have been uh, built, defined by using run and walk in order to explore the system. So. And, and what I'm going to talk about first, it's about Patreon, and so, which is, I think, I don't know if I, maybe I'll explain it to you. So for, but first of all, what, what is run more than a graph? But this is very simple. Let's imagine you are in a configuration like this one here. The worker is on node one. Well, you focus on, on a random walk such that when the worker decides to move, it will follow each of the links with the same probability. So it means that after one time step, the configuration of the system is either this here or that there which means that the, the worker has been moving around following one of the links with the, with the same probability. Very, very big dynamics. So now the thing is that, uh, as I said to you, this very simple dynamical process has been used as a way to define metrics for, for, for life networks. And one of those metrics is something called PageRank, which, which is basically what Google has been using for some time. I don't think they use it anymore. But it's what they've been using in the past in order to rank the importance of web pages. And what is uh, page rank? Well, basically, how it works is you, you have a set of random workers exploring the web, <coughs> and you define page rank as the density of workers on a certain node at stationarity. So you have a graph, like this graph here. You put a certain number of random workers on it, they move around, you let the system reach stationarity, and then you define page rank to be the expected number of workers on a certain node. And this is a measure of the importance of a node for this dynamical process. So you see, in this case, we use a dynamical process, random walks, to give a certain importance to the nodes. Uh, so now, there is also another type, or there are also other types of metrics that are based on random walks, and those are the mm, uh, metrics based on looking for communities. So, there's a whole field of research, I won't go too much into the details here, which is interested in finding 
clusters in large networks. Now the thing is that what clusters or communities tend to affect the way walkers will spread in the system. For instance, if you think in terms of a random walker moving here, well, you would expect that a random walker would be stuck for a long time in the community before it's able to escape. So again, if you think in terms of random walk, you might be able to identify communities as sets of nodes such that a walker would stay for a long time within the community before leaving it. So again, you get a way to measure uh, a topological aspect by using a random walk uh, viewpoint. And this is something that people have been developing, for instance, Martin, who is my co-author, and also other collaborators from, from, from Lambda. So in PageRank and in these community detection methods, so you use random locals to explore the topology of the graph. Uh, but there is there no, yes. in, in, in previous transparency. Yep. What's the meaning of the graph on the right? Okay, uh, so actually so I should also apologize for another thing that I prepared my slides today in the afternoon, which means that the mind will be completely completely uh, uh, yeah, complete, co co completely finished and wiped out. So, I, I, but I can, I can explain to you. So basically, so the, so in this example, it was to show that. No, I won't go into the deal. It, it's not important for us. Okay. <laughs> 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 you can't get the final measure, right? Sorry. You can't get the final distance between two points. You can't get the final importance between two points. Uh, of course, here for page rank, you just look into importance. So this is not the matrix. It's not the matrix. It's just. But no, oh no, of course, sorry, I, I, I use metric, in, maybe not in the same uh, in time distance, just metric in the time, uh, like something to measure something else. Sorry, it's not like a method, it's where you say I'm a true method. Just uh, when I talked about metrics, it, all I meant is just some, some quantities that measure something else. Sorry. Uh, so there is one big problem now, is that for page rank, or for all of these tools that people have been devising for community detection, all of those are defined as stationarity. So, because it makes sense, stationarity is like a well-defined state, at least you expect it to be well-defined, but the problem is that when you look at empirical systems, most of them, for most of them, you will have that this stationary state, it's either trivial, non-uniquely defined, so you might have several ones, or it might ne never be rich in the sense that you, you might have oscillation and your system never reaches stationarity. And basically, where does it come from? It, is that in most networks are directed. When you look at random walks on directed networks, so it's, you, you have a mark of chain. And this mark of chain will reach stationarity only if, and, and a unique stationary state, only if the graph is strongly connected. So what is strong connectedness? It means that if you start from nodes, there will always uh, if you take two nodes, whichever they are, there must be a path going from one node to the other one. You're always, you must always find a way to go from one node to another one in the system. And this is a very strict condition when you look at directed networks. And most directed networks that you have in nature or in society are not strongly connected. So it means that because most networks that you have in nature are not strongly connected, what well, you won't have that the system has a unique stationary state, which also means that all of these metrics that you have are ill-defined. So now that's where people came with the, this idea of teleportation or 12, 12 or 13 years ago, I guess. And their idea was, well, let's try to use a mathematical trick such as to make the dynamics ergonomic, such as to ensure that you have one unique stationary state for, for your process. And so what is teleportation? Well, it, it's very simple. Let's assume that you have, for instance, here, here you have a, a certain part of the graph, here another one. But well, basically, the random walker moves around, follows the link in your system, but occasionally, once in a while, it doesn't follow links, it disappears, and it teleports to a random point selected in the whole graph. So basically, it creates shortcuts, occasionally going, so, you, so the, the walker is not obliged to follow, follow the links anymore, it follows the links, but it, sometimes it doesn't follow the link and goes randomly somewhere in the system. <laughs> and this is something that people have been using, and this is a trick, of course, but this trick has the advantage that it makes the dynamics algorithm. So as soon as you allow for these teleportations, then you are sure that your stationary state is well-defined, it's unique, so it's working. <coughs> but there is another problem, that's that now you have a trick, but the problem is that the ranking, so the, the way page rank is defined, the clustering into communities that you might have, it will depend 
on the details of your teleportation. And this is something that is not a political. So you, so you use the trick to make your methods work, but it also means that you put an extra ingredient and you don't exactly know how the outcome of your algorithm will depend on the details of your teleportation. And now the first part of this talk, so what we've been interested in is yeah, what is the effect of teleportation on, on these, on the ranking of, and on clustering? So on the ranking, we are not the first one to do that. People have been doing it for 10 years or so. But for clustering, I think it's quite new. And, and what we try to bring here is we try to, to modify the bigger, we try to, to modify this, sorry, we try to modify uh, ingredients of teleportation, such as to minimize the effect that it has on the outcome of the algorithm. So we try to, to, to define ways to teleport that don't affect too much the outcome of the, of the algorithm. You know? Yes? I mean, it's not enough to say that it is probability to do the teleportation with you see no? Sir? I mean, if this teleportation is changing somehow the dynamics of how you do it, right? Yeah. But uh, you say that doing teleportation, even if this is small, or not doing is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So, but what if you just take this teleportation going to see So, to, if this is done with some probability, this probability going to see That should give you there. But there is a problem. Uh, there, there is a practical, practical problem there is that so. So well, when you, if you do this teleportation going to zero, the problem is that, so one of the important things when you do writing of nodes, especially for the web, which is a very, very large system, you, you want that to be quite effective computationally. And when you look at the convergence time as a function, uh, so, so when, when you need, to, uh, are we going to do a mathematical detail state? I'll just try to answer your question now. But, so for instance, when you calculate page rank, you need to find the special <coughs> solution of your process. And if you do it with a teleportation rate going to zero, well, uh, the time for convergence explodes. And so it means that you are, this is not something that you can calculate in practice in an algorithm system. So, uh, but I, I'll try to answer that later. Yeah? Well, I don't understand the, the problem. Yes. When you have a disconnected network, yeah. okay, there is no path from one set of nodes to the yeah. other. And often you do both of them are independent. Yeah. So you try to have independent matrices yeah. of your language. So you're making a trick to to make them dependent on each other. Exactly. So why is not it? Make, I mean, the stationary probability does depend on the initial position. If all of the workers start on one network or the other, the stationary distribution is different. Yeah. So you're making a trick to solve what? No, yeah, I, I, I didn't do this trick. It's not me. I'm, I'm not with the, so uh, they call the, people who is in this trick to solve what? But the thing is that, uh, of course, what, what, when one thinks in terms of undirected networks, things are easier because you, you just have disconnected components. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you have uh, when you have directed networks, it's a bit more complicated because you have in components, uh, out components, you have all of these kind of weird type of organization. But the thing is that uh, still, and this is because of the original goal of 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 the of of Pedro, for instance, its goal was to try to to compare the importance of web pages wherever they are. So it means that you would like to find a way that allows you to say which page is more important than another. And in the case that you give here of two disconnected components, well, then you could not do that. So I think that the reason why they, the need to ensure that you use teleportation is because they want to be able to compare things even if they are not in the same cluster. In the language. They would like to find a way to have just one defined uh, ranking for the whole system. Because otherwise, if you have two disconnected components... You could also average over many initial conditions. Uh, you, could, you, could also, you could also average over different initial conditions, but then there is also a problem that's... Uh, and this is related to the, uh, to, the, to the directedness of the system that's... Uh, well, for instance, in many directed networks, you might, at the end, finish, for instance, in a situation like that, <coughs> where Basically, your worker goes into a certain loop and never escapes that loop, which is not something that you might have in an, when the graph is undirected. You don't have these kind of problems anymore. So it means that because the graph is directed, you might in most of the for most of the initial conditions, you will finally reach a situation which is not exactly what which is not very well defined in the sense that, for instance, if you have a graph like that. At, at, at infinite times, you will have that there are no workers here, 
no walkers there, no walkers there. And then basically you have walkers turning around here. Yeah, but this network is like this, no? Ah, yeah, of course it's a network like this. But it means that in turn, of course, and that's why this is what you what you would have for for pure random open the crowd. But because here the, the ID is not, they, they don't care too much about random nodes. What they're interested in is a way to rank nodes. And as a way to rank nodes, this is not very interesting. Because it means that here, all of these nodes are the same. Uh, and and you're, not even, you're not even able to, to differentiate these nodes. And they, and they are different. While a pure random walk would just say that all of those are zero. And here you, you have an oscillation. So, so it's true that if, you ju if you're just interested in random walks, why teleportation? But here it's because you, you want to use teleportation. Uh, sorry, if, if, but here you want to use random walks such as to solve a problem, which is how to rank nodes. I, I, I don't know if, it's, yeah. if, if I can say, I mean, uh, uh, the same happens when you have a web page when you only have incoming users. Yeah, exactly. The point is when you navigate the, the internet, the web yeah. pages, you don't stop there because you don't have a way to, way to get out. But you yeah. have to go to somewhere else. Yeah. And this is, this is what is mimicking the teleportation. Yeah, uh, so, so this is something I should say. But so, so teleportation, uh, as uh, Victor has been saying, so it's a mathematical trick. But it's it's a way somehow to to mimic the way people behave on the web. Because it's true that when I'm on the web, I tend to follow links, but I don't follow links forever. I'm bored at some point, and I might I follow links, and then suddenly I, I open a new tab and I start somewhere else. So it means that to mimic the way people are exploring the web, well, in a way I move around in a fairly random fashion. But then, after a certain number of clicks, I will stop, continue clicking, I will start from somewhere else. So it means that from, a, from, from, from the perspective of, of, of the web, of the way people are exploring the web, this concept of tele teleportation is not complete. Well, well, basically, this is why after the time you stop that experiment and you start with any initial conditions. That's what it means the user is not following the links. Exactly, and teleportation but is just that. It's just uh, you follow the links. Yeah. And then, so then, and then you stop following them, you go to the rest. It's not, not, nothing more than that. So now, that, so, and so basically, so what we've been playing around here, so, so, so basically, usual teleportation is what I've been tele telling you. So here is just to try to summarize what we've been doing. So usual teleportation, what people do is, so run a walk, move, move around, and then at some point, they will, they will teleport, and, you, and they teleport randomly in the whole system. So here, what I will mainly talk about today is something that where instead of teleporting uniformly in the system, they teleport with different probabilities to different nodes. So we try to incorporate some topological properties in the, proper, in the probability to land on a certain node. So in usual teleportation, the probability to land on this or that or that or that node is the same. You teleport uniformly through the whole system. Here, what you are playing around is it's a probability where you land on a node with a certain probability that depends on the topological property of that node. So you try to put a bit of the topology in this teleportation process, so just in a nutshell. Uh, so here, just just a bit of math, very very simple. So here, uh, in in this, so I'm interested in directed networks. So for the notations, uh, so AIJ. It's uh, so it's uh, adjacent symmetrics. It's equal to one when there is a link going from J to I. So, uh, so if there is a link going from J to I, there is a link between going from uh, there is a link. Uh, sorry, there is a one in the, at the entry of that matrix. So KJ out is the number of links leaving node J. So now if you if you look at random walks, the usual random walks without teleportation, and if you look at what is the priority that the time evolution of the density of walkers on a certain node. This is this, so this is the density of walkers at node i time t plus 1. So its evolution is just given by this thing here where you have the transition matrix, which is based on the adjacent matrix. So this is pure diffusion. And this is the process which might lead to these kind of oscillations or different final states depending on your initial conditions if your, if your graph is not truly connected. So now if you look now at teleportation, so the, the way teleportation is, is set up, 
what you do is you have the same kind of evolution, except that with the probability alpha, you follow links. So with probability alpha, you have the usual random walk. With the probability 1 minus alpha, you teleport randomly in the system. So now VI, this VI here, it's what's usually called in the literature the preference vector. And what is the preference vector? Well, it's, it's a vector which tells you what is the preference that the worker will write on, on a certain node by teleportation. So in 99% of the works, this VI is uniform, so it means that you land uniformly in the system. But if you look into the literature, usually the VI is something that you use, such as to fine tune page rank to the, to the interest, to the taste of a certain user. So if I like, I don't know, let's say I like football, for instance, then maybe that's the way page rank will be calculated will be such that VI will be higher on, on web pages related to football and lower for other, other web pages. So usually the VI is used as a way to, so to fine tune the value of page rank to the, to, 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 to the interest, to the taste of a, of a, of a certain user. So, and so, what, and so what is page rank? I've been talking about for some time now. Well, this is the special solution of that recursive equation here. You can write it down formally in just solving this. And, and basically, you arrive at an equation which is here. So page rank is it's basically given by this thing here, which is just a, a, a serious expansion of the solution. To the so this is the formal solution of this equation. It's just in algebra. It's not, quite, it's not really difficult here. So now the thing is that for, when, when you look at this equation here, you directly see that, well, there is a, a dependence on VI. So the choice of VI will change the value of Pedro. And there is a, a dependence on alpha. Different values of alpha will give you different values of Pedro as well. And, and as I said, so when, when, when you look into the literature, almost all, everybody uses VI, which is uniform. And almost everybody uses the alpha, which is 0 0.85, because it's and, and wh why is that so? Well, you need to choose a value of alpha, which is between 0 and 1, anyway. When it's 0, it's a bit trivial, because it means that when it's 0, you just teleport. So it's not very interesting. You don't have again, any kind of run mode, you just teleport to the system. And your solution is just VI. When alpha is equal to 1, well, you know that the, system, the problem is ill defined. And you also know that when alpha is too close to 1, conversion is very slow. So you cannot go too close to 1. So you try to go as close as possible to 1, but not too close, otherwise it's too complicated to calculate. And the typical value that people use is 0 0.85, because it's close enough to 1, but not that close such that it's too complicated, too, too lengthy to calculate the special solution. So, so, so what we've been playing with is so trying to, to incorporate just a bit of the topology into the preference vector. And the simplest, uh, and, and after some thought, and actually it, it, it's an idea that we had for quite a long time, it's <coughs> just now that we, we decided to, to play with it, is we decided that to try to, to make teleportation proportional to the integral of the nodes. And this is not a naive choice, there's, there, there, there is some idea behind it, I'll try to explain it to you now. And so now, if, if you take this, this particular choice of teleportation uh, of, of, of the preference vector, so you can write again the expression for page rank for this part of a particular expression, and you arrive at this expression here. And so now, first of all, it's what you can see that so the leading contribution is just the degree, and then you have different contributions coming from path of length k in the system, because t to the power k counts all of the path of length k arriving at a certain node i. And what you observe here is that for this path of length k, you have positive or negative contributions coming from the difference between the in and out degree of the, of the node. And this actually makes sense because let's assume you have a node i here. You have a certain path of length k arriving to it. And here you would have a node j. Well, this, the contribution will be high when this node j receives many links and just has a few links going out. Because in that case, you would have some kind of concentration where you would have many potential workers coming in and they are concentrated on the path going to I. While this contribution would be negative in the other, the, uh, in the other case when you would have 
that this node j has just a few incoming links and many outgoing links. So, it's, so in that case, you have more some kind of a dilution where a few random workers come in and they are and, and they are just have a small priority to take the path going to the node i. And so here you see that what's really important for this pageant, which is defined for this uh, telephone, for this preference vector, it's really the difference between in and out degrees at different a different at length of different path, uh, a path of different lengths. So now what's nice, and this is quite clear when you look at this expression, is that this page rank here, well, it seems it seems that it doesn't depend too much on the values of alpha. So what do I mean here? You can see that at least there are situations where pi alpha is doesn't depend on alpha at all. And this is clear that it happens when this thing here is equal to zero. So and when does this thing here it, it, when is it equal to zero? Well, it is equal to zero when the graph is undirected. So, so when the graph is undirected, you have that well, there are no directions, so in and out degrees are the same. You also have it when the graph is uh, Eulerian, so Eulerian graph is just directed networks where in and out degrees are the same for each node, anyway. But even, even better, what you can also show is that actually this expression here, it's also a constant, so it doesn't depend on alpha, when when you look into the mean field approximation. So what is mean field approximation? You, you assume that your graph is very random, that is well mixed, and if you use this approximation, you can use some mathematical tricks, and you can also show that again, <coughs> page rank, this particular page rank defined for this particular preference vector doesn't depend on the value of alpha. So in this case, is also guaranteed that the value is positive for all nodes? Uh, you mean? Uh, the rank. Yes. They are all positive. Yes, yes. No, 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 they are not strictly positive. You might have some nodes that have a zero page rank. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, but, uh, but you're sure that there are of all of the all of the nodes being zero in links have a zero page rank, but for the other ones they will all, all be positive. And and in a way this is a bit what we are looking for because I was telling you that it's not very nice to have a teleportation process where because it, because you know that the outcome of the algorithm will depend very much on the details of the teleportation here at least. You seem to have something where, in certain situations, the dependence of page rank, uh, the dependence on, uh, on alpha, is, is minimal, because you know that when the graph is undirected, it won't depend on it won't depend on alpha. In the mean field, when the graph is extremely random, it shouldn't depend on alpha either. So, so what we've been doing, well, well we've been implementing this uh, this page rank and, and looking into data to see if it was the case. So. So we, uh, we shouldn't look too much into these two. Let's look at, uh, at the first two at the top. So basically, the first check, thing that we checked, we looked at the whole ISI network. Uh, so you have uh, a network of journals citing each other. And basically, what you do is, uh, well, you may you use these tools to rank the importance of the nodes according to the density of workers on, on each node. And what you can see here is that so here you would have the teleportation rate, it's one minus alpha, and here you have the the, the ranking of the top five journals <coughs> for the different values of alpha for the usual uh, for, for the usual uh, page rank and for this page rank where teleportation is proportional to a degree. So and what you can and the scales here are the same. So the so, you, so the scale are the same. So what you directly observe is that in, in the usual teleportation, you have what, the, ch the, the absolute values of the page rank change a lot, but also the rankings can be changed quite a bit when, when going from one extreme to the other extreme of the value of alpha. When you look into this link teleportation, you have that, first of all, the absolute values change way less, but also you can check that the number of, 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 of pair change in the rankings are also smaller. So this is just an illustrative example. So and just one thing which is quite important to, to emphasize. I don't mean to say that PNAS is better than nature. Here, here we, we looked in, so here we have, what we've been doing is really looking at a, a network, not a particle, a network of journals. So you have PNAS considered as a big, a big node. Maybe there are no, like, let's say 1,000 articles in there. Then you might have nature here. And then you have PNAS papers citing each other, 
PNAS papers citing nature papers and, and the other way around and so on. And then I don't know, you might have uh, APGB and so on and so on. But the thing is that these, these, these values that we have here uh, have not been normalized per article. So it means that the total value of, the total importance of PNAS is bigger than the one of nature, but if you divide by the number of articles, then it's not the same, because there are way more papers published in PNAS than in nature. But anyway, here, the important thing is that the rankings and the values don't seem to change less by using this thing teleportation. And I think you can check that more seriously by looking at the whole, at a broad range of, of systems. So we looked at, at a broad range of, broad range of networks. And of course, one, so the co-authorship, I think it's undirected, so this one we know for sure, but it, it should be good. So what we have here, so we have the teleportation rate, and basically we compare the values, of the, so we have vectors of page rank for each value of alpha, and we compare these vectors, so we, uh, for instance, the one at 0 0.8, with the one at 0 0.15, which is the tra traditional value. Anyway, and what you observe is that when you look at link teleportation, you get something which is very, very close to one, so it means that the values are extremely correlated. The rankings, and the, no, the values of the rank don't change too much. <coughs> While when you do the usual teleportation, you will always have something where basically you have a dependence which is much stronger on the value. Of time. So, so here the message is that when you do no teleportation, the usual teleportation, your the outcome of your algorithm dep depends more on the value of alpha than it does when you do link tele teleportation. Uh, so that there is another part of the, of the project which has both community detection, because so in community de detection, again, you use random walkers to explore the graph. And so in that case, well, this is a bit more trivial. So what you've been doing is in, in, uh, incorporating something where so you, you also teleport, but, but so in, in the usual way, when you, when you teleport and, and you use a certain algorithm to look for communities in your graph, well, you, you will count all transitions lab. The transitions following the links or the transition that don't follow the links. Here, wh what we propose, which is very basic, is that when you, when you look for communities, when you look for structures, you might use teleportation, such as to ensure the ergodicity of your dynamics, but when you look for structures, you should not count these links, which makes complete sense. And actually, if, if you do so, and, and so, what, so and the algorithm we use is the math equation that I won't go into the details in there. And so here is just, another, it's, it's just a, a check of, 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 of what I've been saying here. So we've been using benchmarks, so the benchmarks of Latigenity and Fortunato, it's a benchmark for community detection. We use something called the map equation, which is a way to find communities in large networks. And we looked at the, at the dependence of, of the quality of the partitioning of the, of the community detection as a function of the teleportation rate and as a function of the mixing rate. So what is the mixing rate? It is something that tells you how difficult the communities are to find in your benchmark. And what you observe here is that, well, if you do what people tend to do before, counting all links, even those that are due to teleportation, well, teleportation brings some noise in your, in your, in your system, and it prevents you to find the communities present in your system. And yes, you find that the, the, the regime in which you find the benchmark solution is, it's, well, it depends e on the teleportation rate and on the and on the mixture rate. Well, if you don't count this transition due to teleportation, you just use teleportation as a way to ensure identity, but you, you don't you don't use this information which is completely useless. If you do so, you have something that doesn't depend at all on the teleportation, which is what you like, would like to find. You would like to have something that doesn't depend on, on the details of your of, of your of your natural structure. Uh, so now I'd like to talk to, to you on, on something else, and here I'm very sorry because I think I stole this slide from here. I think it's yours. So I'm, I'm feeling a bit ashamed because you use the same slide after. Uh, no, so it improved it. It has fancier colors. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'll give it back to you if you want. <laughs> so, so basically, so, so, so far I've been talking about uh, random walks on static networks and, and this uh, fancy teleportation process. So now what I'd like to talk about shortly is something else, it's random walks on networks that evolve in time. And so the thing is that when you look into empirical data, yeah, 
on, and I will have in my mobile phone data from something. It's what I've been used to, to look at for some time. Well, a social network is not static. The social network has links that appear and disappear in time. So it means that, in principle, I won't go too much into the details because Yarry is going to talk about that extensively just after me. But when you look at, into a graph, you have links between people, but you also have quite a bit of information at, in the times at, being, at which those things appear. So it means that if you really want to describe a system completely, you should have a, have a graph where you have links between people and also the times at, when, at which those things appear. So now the thing is that in a majority of work, what people do is completely forget about these time sequences what they will just do is aggregate this information into one number, which will be the strength of the interaction between people. And it would simply count, for instance, the number of times people call each other. So it means that from this very complete information here, where you have the, the, the exact times at which links appear, people forget about this detail and just look into an aggregate number that tells you the importance of the relation between the people. So now, the thing is that and, and then, and, and, one, so, and, and from the static picture, because this is a dynamic picture, this is a static picture, then they might use, they might use some runaway process, such as the, the one I, I presented to you before. And what they would do is either look at discrete times, so you would do a run walk and would be at discrete times on this weighted graph, or they would use continuous times, run walk, but always with Poisson waiting times, for which you can also write an equation for the time evolution of the run walks. So there is a problem here, and the main problem is the fact that when you look at the interrelevant times at which link appear and disappear in, in empirical data, so if you look at these uh, time statistics, so the time it takes for link to reappear after the first time, well, those interrelevant times are neither discrete nor possible. They are usually bursty or at least broadly distributed in the sense that if you look at the waiting time or the, uh, uh, the waiting time between, between two phone calls between two people or the waiting time between uh, uh, two phone calls that I make to anyone, all of these waiting time distributions are neither Poissonian, neither discrete, they, are, they tend to be extremely broad. So, so now the thing is that when, when, when you look into the literature and and this is what, what Yari is going to talk about. And, uh, and, and when people try to go beyond this static picture, which we know is quite far from the way, far from realistic, well, what people tend to do is to perform simulations on, on, the, on the temporal graph. So what they would do is take the temporal graph, use the exact times at which links appear, and then simulate a diffusion. So they could simulate disease spreading, they could simulate random or whatever. So now, and, oh, and then the, they would observe a certain curve of the time it takes for the cell to be infected or the time it takes for the diffusion to spread through the, throughout the whole system. But, and then to, to be able to, to give a message, because if you just look at a curve, you cannot say anything, you need to have a comparison. What they would look at is compare the dynamics with none of this, when they basically shadow something about the system. But Yara is going to talk about it later. And basically, they could say, for instance, that if you look at random walk on the temporal graph, it might spread faster than it does on the graph when you forget about the details at which uh, <coughs> This would be the type of, of conclusion that people might have. Uh, so now, the theory, in this one, we, we didn't really want to follow this one. What we were interested in was to try to find some kind of intermediate solution, where we didn't want to do the simulation, just a computational approach. We didn't want to just to do a simulation on the temporal graph. We didn't want to lose the whole information about the temporal statistics. We, we wanted to find some kind of a, of a balanced solution. And to do so, what we, what, what we, what we decided to use is it's to, but to apply an old idea from, from physics. I remember when I was a student a while ago, I had a course by Rani Balescu. At the same. And, and we had a course on uh, generalized master equations, which is basically a theory for random walks where the waiting times between the jumps can be any kind of waiting time distribution you like. And so this is exactly the type of approach that might be interesting here, because what you could do is 
instead of <coughs> going from there to a, to a weighted graph where you just aggregate the number of times that a link appears uh, as appeared in a certain time window, you might go to a representation where on each link you don't put a number, you, you put uh, a weighting time distribution. So it means that so this is something which is between a number and a sequence of numbers. You would put a weighting time distribution that tells you well the links will appear and disappear in time. And this weighting time distribution tells you how long you're, you're, you, should, you, you would expect to wait before the link appears. So what's nice is that for, for these types of processes, you can write down mathematical equation and you can solve a few things. So this is fairly recent work, so this is not completely done yet, but at least here, here are the, the basic results that we have. So basically, so if, if you look at the time evolution of a certain number of a worker on a certain node as a function of time, for this equation, well, you might have any kind of waiting time distribution, and the waiting time distributions are these psi here that you assign to each link. Well, you arrive at a fairly nasty equation, so all of these things are convolutions in time, so it means that you have an in integral differential equation, what you would expect to find. And this basically comes from the fact that as soon as you have non person waiting time, you will have a dependence on the past. And, and so when you need to look at the evolution of the system, you need to account for what happened in the past. You can not just look at the present, but at the future. So what's, what's interesting is that so you can write, write down this equation. It, it has a first in, interesting property, which is quite basic, but still it, it emphasizes the importance of the time ordering of at which the links appear. And so, so basically what you have, at, at some point you have a certain effective transition matrix appearing. And I, I, the math are not complicated, but it's much easier to understand just here with, a, with an example is that when, let's assume that you have a system where you have a worker here, and then you have a certain waiting time distribution for the links here to appear or to disappear. Well, this worker there, what is the chance that you arrive here? It will be basically the chance that the link here <coughs> appears before that one. <coughs> because if that link appears before this one there, the worker will go somewhere else, and you won't have the chance to arrive there anymore. So it means that as soon as you have these waiting time distributions appearing, well, you will need to take into account uh, the ordering at which the link appear and disappear. And this is basically what's happening here, that you have a certain, well, a certain priority that depends on the priority that this link appears at a certain time before that one, that one here appears. Anyway, so, so what you can do is just to play around. So just for, for, as a first step, you can check what happens when you use <coughs> when, when you have Poisson waiting times, and when you do so, you recover the usual uh, well, uh, rate equations that people have been using for some time. And this lambda ij is just well, it's, it's just an effective matrix that tells you the the uh, mean waiting time for appearance of a link between j and i. But, but what's more interesting is that you can check the importance, the effects that the shape of the waiting time distribution has on some properties of, of your normal process. So for the time being, we've been looking at extremely simple examples, just a triangle, playing around with, uh, with different waiting time distributions. And if you do so, so here in this case, you have different waiting time distributions. You, can, you could look <coughs> at how the process would evolve if all of these waiting time distributions were exponential, so if you have a Poisson process, if you do so, you would have that if you start with all of the workers on, no, on any of the nodes, while well, you arrive at a situation where all of the workers are uh, well, <coughs> at, at an equivalent situation. So another thing is that you, if you take into account the shapes of those distributions, well, you will arrive at a situation at a situation where you which is quite different because you don't have this, this equipartition anymore. But what's also nice is that you can predict these states. So this state here, these uh, horizontal lines, are, well, are just mathematical conditions. So you can predict what is the asymptotic state of your process. And, and, these are, and this seems to be, uh, yeah, to be verified by the, by the simulations. So there is also another funny thing, that, which also makes sense, but at first it, it was funny to observe is that if you start your simulations from the stationary solution, and if you let time evolve, 
your system won't stay in the stationary solution. It will first evolve for some time before it returns to the stationary solution. And this is, again, something that is due to the fact that you have a, a, a memory of the past in your system. Your stationary solution is stationary only when time is infinite. If you use the value of your stationary solution and you put it at a finite time, well, it won't be stationary anymore. You might you will move around, but if, but if you wait long enough, you will return to your stationary solution again, which is also something which is. <coughs> uh, so, so I think that I, I'll conclude. So as you say, see, I didn't have the time to finish my slide for the conclusion. It's very late here. Uh, so, so what I really wanted to try. To to, yeah, to talk to you about today is yes, some, risk, some, some fairly recent results on random walks and networks. And, uh, and so, so the first one was really about the fact that random walks are really at the heart of many methods to find information in networks. So I talked about page rank, uh, there is this map equation, which is a fairly nice way to find communities and clusters in networks. Are also like versions of modularity that are based on random walks. So many metrics, many <coughs> methods that people have been using are based on random walks at stationarity. And because they are based on random walks at stationarity, you need to make sure that your that stationarity exists in the system. So what, what we've been playing around is to first of all to try to, to understand the importance of teleportation on the outcome of the algorithm of the methods, and trying to play around such as to minimize the, the, the effect that teleportation has. Then the other part of the book, it's quite, quite recent, it's really trying to, to, get, to get in the direction of a mathematical formalism for temporal networks. Because, so temporal networks are extremely popular right now. For the last few years, you can go to conferences all the time on dynamics and dynamical networks or variations of the name. But to be honest, there has not been that much from a theoretical side in that direction. You have many computational networks many empirical observations, but you don't have much theory to, to try to, to, yeah, to, to give some framework on how to deal, how to understand the system. And here, here in this case, what we try to do is to go a bit in that direction, trying to, uh, to, to, to get some, some mathematical formation that allows you to go beyond the static picture and to account for at least part of the statistics of the way the links appear in the system. So I think I'm done. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Questions? Comments? Yeah. So with respect to the distributions, this is no Poinsonian distribution. If all, all of them are the same for the, so that those don't depend on the link, right? Because this is, this is the case you were studying here. You have different average time for waiting time for if all of them are the same, but there still is not a, a Poissonian distribution, there are many changes in the dynamics, or it's quite similar to the Poissonian case. Sorry, so, so I go back to this example. So here I think what is important is not only the same, but the fact that the averages are different, right? The average time for A is bigger than for oh. C and from B. No, no, no. So actually the average are not that important. So, so, so something that I sh should have said is, so here the process that, that you consider, when you go into the Poisson limit, you arrive at a continuous time random walk such that the session solution is always uniform. So this is uh, so so you know that there are different types of Laplacian operators. There is one which is a i j divided by k j minus delta i j, and there is one which is a i j minus k i delta i j. And this is the one that we have here. So th this is one where whatever your, whatever the values of your, of, of, of your lambdas, you will have a uniform distribution of walkers in the system. And so it means here, so we, here we use an example where you, we have different waiting times, but if, it, if those had been the same values, the same averages, we would also have had here different, so different. You have the same set, how, I mean, how can you have different distribution for one, two, and three. I mean, I don't see that. Sorry? So how can you get di different distribution of workers if the distribution of waiting time for the links are the same? I don't there know. No correlation, so. No, they're no, no, not the same. They're they different shapes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they're different shapes. Even, okay, but you have a Poissonian with different shapes. <laughs> yeah. You also 
will get something like that, right? No, because here, so here in this example here, we had uh, for this link a Poissonian with a average uh, with a, an average of one. For that one, a Poissonian with an average of one third. For that one, a Poissonian with well, an exponential with a with a average waiting time of one half. And in that case, you, you get the dynamic stretches such as this one here. And here, the only difference between this curve and that curve. We have the same averages, just we have different shapes. And, and as soon as you have different shapes, you might have differences arising in, in, in your dynamics. In, you see that the transients are quite different, but even the stationary solutions are different as well. Renaud, the, the differences means uh, something like, I mean, one of them has to have a second moment infinite, or, or any distribution with, uh, with any kind of moment is okay. Like, for instance, I mean, you were saying exponential, Poissonian, and uh, yeah. Uh, something like uh, has a clear and it's just a, a fixed value. Yeah. Uh, this tree produces uh, this, this uh, kind of problem. We have like, three different levels. Yeah. Or is uh, I mean, one of them is power row and then. No, no, no. Here we use very. So I think that. So here, the, the, so here we have three curves for, for the three. So, so in this case, so one of the links here, I think it's an exponential. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the links is a t square, and the other link is some kind of a discrete type of thing. So it was just a. But then we use different choices. So in, in, in this case, we are not in a situation where you have like a diverging moments or whatever. They are not see the one of them, of course. No, no, no. Here, in this case, everything is well behaved. So we, all of the moments are well defined and everything. It's just that because of the fact that you have different shapes, you will have different values here that, that are. And, and where does it come from? Actually, it comes from, from, it mainly comes from this thing that I was talking about. That basically, so, so, it, so when you look at diffusion on temporal networks, it's not only the, uh, the expected time you have to wait for a link to appear that is important. You also need to make sure that this link appears before the other one nearby. And because of that, it will basically affect the way the workers are moving, and it will also affect the session solution. And you can check that this effect completely disappears if you have a Poisson process, because everything is independent. So Everything, you can think always in terms of rates, but as soon as you don't have an exponential distribution for the waiting time, so as soon as you don't have a Poisson process, then you will always have this kind of effect appearing, and you will always have to, to think in terms of who's coming first. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we, we can uh, stop here now. Uh, there is coffee outside, and then we have uh, the second seminar at the Porsche Passport. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.